Hey guys, it's Maggie. We're going to be doing passage four from the CP section of the sample test today. Let's go. As always, I'm going to try to show you as many of our strategies as I can. This is a great passage for flow charting. Celecoxib compound one is an anti-inflammatory drug that decreases the synthesis of inflammatory mediators. All right, already a relationship uh, by specific inhibition of the enzyme cyclooxygenase two. So it decrease inflammatory mediators by um, inhibiting COX-2. More recently, compound one has been reported to decrease the risk of developing colorectal cancer in humans due to these anti-inflammatory properties. Compound one is eliminated from the body in the urine following metabolism by the enzyme cytochrome P452C9. Okay. Um, CYP2C9 metabolizes C1. A hemoprotein involved in the processing of many therapeutic drugs. Okay, we have a figure here. So the first thing is a figure caption. Structure of compound one and the CYP2C9 mediated production of compound two. So I guess this is like the metabolism they were talking about. It looks like the only change is the addition of this like uh, alcohol group right here. In addition to the wild type enzyme, known point mutations within the CYP2C9 gene have given rise to allelic variations or variants of this enzyme in the human population. Two specific variants, CYP2C9, 2, and 3, are associated with the decreased metabolism and an elimination of many therapeutic drugs, which affects drug dosage protocols and increases potential for side effects. Okay, so the STAR2 and the STAR3... Uh, decreased drug elimination increases side effects. Table one shows the reaction kinetics of the three forms of CYP2C9 towards compound one. So what do I expect going into this figure? I expect um, the variants to not um, eliminate compound one as well. In vitro kinetics of compound one evaluated with recombinant CYP2C9 one, two, and three enzyme variants. So I see that, you know, we have our three different names right here, and I see that the KM is pretty comparable, but the VMAX is what has like a big uh, drop off between the variants, and then it tells us our substitution here. Compound one is known to increase the rate of adverse drug side effects in humans when administered with the anticoagulant warfarin uh, due to inhibition of the CYP2C9 mediated processing of warfarin. Okay, so compound one plus warfarin equals increased side effects. Because we are inhibiting this. And uh, another figure, it says the line Weaver Burke plot of CYP2C91 processing of warfarin in the presence and absence of compound one. Okay, so that's definitely foreshadowing right there. They're coming out with a line Weaver Burke plot that's definitely basic science that they love to ask questions about. And um, it's kind of out of nowhere, sort of. I mean, the whole passage was talking about you know, inhibition and compound one versus the CYP2C9 and yada, yada, yada. But, um, you know, honestly, this whole thing about warfarin and definitely this chart is foreshadowing. So this passage was really good for flow charting because there was a lot of like, as you add this, you increase this or you decrease this or you inhibit this. That's what I like love to flow chart because that's the part that's confusing to me. And it's the part that they can easily ask a question like, if I increase the concentration of compound one, what's going to happen to yada, yada, yada. And then I can just look back at my flow chart and see kind of what compound one does. Question 18 says, researchers use reverse phase, high performance liquid chromatography, um, polar mobile phase, look at this, polar mobile phase and non-polar stationary phase to separate compound two from compound one. Which statement accurately describes this process? Okay, so if we simplify this question down, this is totally asking about a basic science, so we should know it's asking about polarity um, and chromatography and how those two are going to relate with the information that we have in the passage because they gave us the molecules, what the molecules look like. So this question is basically asking which compound is more polar and therefore it's going to go with the mobile phase and kind of what statement is going to describe that. 
So we already did the figure interpretation between compound one and compound two and saw that the only difference was the addition of an alcohol. And an alcohol is definitely going to increase the relative polarity of that molecule. So compound two is going to be more polar than compound one. I'm going to rewrite that here. So compound two is more polar, therefore it's going to go with the mobile phase with the chromatography uh, in question. Now our only task is to find an answer choice that fits uh, what we're saying here. A says increasing the polarity of the mobile phase will decrease the retention time of compound one relative to compound two. So this looks to be like the kind of question where we're going to have to actually simplify each answer choice to really get it down to a simple question. So we're increasing the polarity of the mobile phase. What's that going to do? That's going to um, help compound two out and kind of hurt uh, compound one. And compound one is going to stick even more so probably with the stationary phase. So what do they mean when they're talking about retention time then? Retention time is usually talking about the stationary phase and it's referring to how long um, a compound is going to kind of cling on to the stationary phase rather than going with the mobile phase. So nonpolar things, if, if it's a nonpolar stationary phase, then nonpolar compounds are going to have a high retention time. So compound one's already in the stationary phase. And what this question is saying is if we increase the polarity of the mobile phase, will that, scratch all this out, will that make compound one move with the polar uh, mobile phase more so than the stationary phase. That's what decreasing the retention time would mean. From there, it's clear to see that no, it, it increasing the polarity of the mobile phase is gonna make compound two stick with the mobile phase more, but compound one was the nonpolar compound relatively. Um, so it's going to probably increase the retention time if anything. B says compound one will elute first because it is more polar than compound two. So clearly, no, right? We, we decided compound two was more polar. C says decreasing the affinity of compound one for the stationary phase will increase its retention time relative to compound two. Again, retention time is usually referring to how long something's going to stick with the stationary phase. So if we are decreasing compound one's affinity for the stationary phase, is it going to stick with the stationary phase more? Probably not. So I don't like that one. D says compound two will elute first because it does not interact as favorably with the stationary phase as compound one. Basically, you can cross all this out, make it easier on yourself and simplify this down to compound two will elute first because it sticks with the mobile phase. And that is a correct statement. Number 19 says, which data suggests the differences in compound one metabolism between the variant and wild type CYP2C9 enzymes are not due to changes in the binding affinity towards compound one. Let's simplify this down. When you see anything on the MCAT about binding affinity, especially if it's been mentioned in the passage, which it has, you should automatically be thinking about KM. So what this question is saying is that there are obviously differences in the metabolism of compound one in all the variants that was mentioned in the passage. But what data suggests that those differences that we saw is not because of a difference in KM? A says compound one is still eliminated from the body of patients expressing the CYP2C9-3 allele. So no one's saying that these variants straight up don't work. I mean, they, they work even if they are less effective at eliminating the drug. They still do eventually eliminate the drug. So I don't think that that's telling us anything new. B says the KM values for the variant enzymes do not differ significantly from the wild type enzyme. That is true. We, we saw that when we did our original figure interpretation, and it also definitely answers the question. What data suggests that the, the differences we see between the variants is not because of a difference in KM? Because there is no difference in KM. That is totally a good answer. I'm going to go ahead and highlight it, but if this were y'all in a test, I would want you to just put a maybe beside it. C says the amino acid substitutions at position 144 and 359 do not change the binding pocket of the variant enzymes. So let's go back up and see. This is what they're talking about. Would a change from arginine to cysteine change anything? I would think so because arginine is a basic amino acid and cysteine's not. So I would expect a change there. The difference between isoleucine and leucine is, is uh, not that different. So I might not see a change there, but regardless, 
Position 144 would have a change in the binding pocket. D says the side chains of the amino acid residues at positions 144 and 359 are charged at physiological pH. So we already talked about isoleucine and leucine at 359, and we know that those are not charged amino acids, so that's not true. B is our best answer here. Number 20 says if the data used to generate the kinetic parameters in table 1 were displayed in a Lineweaver-Burke plot, the plot would show that the y-intercept... So what's the y-intercept in a Lineweaver-Burke plot? It's 1 over Vmax, right? So basically this question's asking, what's the difference between the Vmaxes of the variance? Let's go see. So I know that we already did this when we were doing our figure interpretation, which is good, um, but we saw that the Vmaxes were all wildly different. So 1 over these Vmaxes would be wildly different. The y-intercepts would be different for each variant. Boom. Number 21 says the overall reaction scheme for enzymes of the CYP450 enzyme family is shown with R representing the substrate. And it gives us an equation. In this reaction, NADPH functions as... So in this case, I would definitely glance at the answer choices just to get a guide of what I'm looking for. Okay, I see. So A says an oxidizing agent. So let's uh, just kind of do our little redox. Um, and see what's getting oxidized and reduced in this equation. So I see a good cheat code when you're doing redox reactions, which is we have um, like a diatomic molecule. Um, so in this case, it, the charge of those oxygens is going to be zero. Let's see what the charge is for the oxygens on the other side. So this oxygen is going to be two minus um, because these hydrogens are both plus one. The hydrogen on the left side of the equation is plus one. So we know that the oxygen is getting reduced, re oil rig, reduction is gain of electrons, and we do see a gain of electrons from left to right in the oxygen. So if the oxygen's getting reduced, something has to get oxidized, and it's not those hydrogens. Those are pl plus one on both sides. So what does see an OIL oxidation is loss of electrons. What sees a loss of electrons? Something that's neutral on the left side, but positive on the right side. So this NADPH is not charged over here, and it's a plus one over here. So this isn't totally balanced right now because there's a loss of one electron, but a gain of two electrons. And what I'm guessing is that there's probably a loss of electrons uh, in this change into an alcohol right here, but honestly, I'm just doing the best that I can. But what is known is that the oxygen's getting uh, reduced and the NADPH is getting oxidized. So in this reaction, NADPH functions as a molecule that gets oxidized and in the process reduces the oxygen. So it is a reducing agent. It's definitely not a catalyst because if you'll remember, catalysts don't get changed in the reaction, and in this case, NADPH turned into NADP+, um, so it can't be a catalyst. It's definitely not an oxidizing agent because it did not oxidize something, it reduced something. Okay, guys, I hope I was clear enough to make that helpful. Um, if you like this kind of content, then keep following us, and we're going to keep posting these breakdowns. See you next time.